Welcome to Slimefoot the Stowaway. I hope you're excited for some sapling green black aristocrats. Oh yeah, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, but let's take a look at Slimefoot. So we're looking at colors, green and a black. Uh, whenever a sapling you control dies, Slimefoot deals one damage to each opponent and you gain one life. Then for a four mana activation, create a 1-1 one -one green sapling creature token. Now, one of the big things to take away from Slimefoot is that... Um, it deals one damage to each opponent whenever a sapling dies. It's not going to be like a blood artifact where they lose a life and then you gain a life. And the main reason for that is there's two important things. There's going to be a few cards that uh, whenever this creature deals combat or whenever it deals damage to each opponent, uh, you're going to be able to draw a card. And there's also going to be infects. So you can give Slimefoot infect and also kind of close the game out that way. Um, let's say we have 10 saplings on the battlefield. We have a sack outlet. Uh, we go to give Slimefoot tainted strike, which is going to give it infect. We sacrifice those creatures, that's going to be 10 damage to the entire board, and you're going to be able to close it out with infect damage. Now, it's going to be up to you to see how heavy you want to go with infect. There's definitely more infect cards out there that you can give to Slimefoot, stuff like Exoskeleton, and I can't remember the name, but there's an enchantment that you can put on there that also gives Slimefoot um, infect. But as far as my particular build, I ended up just going with Tainted Strike because I just wanted to have it to be an option. You know, you want to definitely want to kind of build that, uh, that back door into your deck, just in case you need to go for that win. Um, another big thing to talk about with Slimefoot is going going to be the sapling creatures that get spore counters on them. Um, one of the things this deck cares about is getting sapling creatures onto the battlefield. Um, in my playtesting, my best experience was actually using spells like sorcery or instant, steed, uh, instant speed spells to get those sapling tokens on the battlefield. Uh, you can definitely build a lot of those fungus creatures in here. Um, I just wanted to highlight that sometimes it may make the deck a little bit slow. You may not be able to get as many saplings as you want onto the battlefield because typically the whole thing comes crashing down uh, once somebody goes for a board wipe. So I just wanted to highlight that, but if you want to build a Dirtle deck, you need something that kind of goes a little bit in longer game, and maybe your power level of the deck's not going to be as uh, strong, but you want to have some fun, definitely go for that. You can definitely run a mix of the sapling creatures in there, the fungus creatures, but uh, you don't want to go super heavy on those creatures, at least in my playtesting, because it kind of leads to some... Uh some really slow board states, so you can't really get a lot still, a lot going. But yeah, let's go and jump into the deck tech. So let's take a look into Slimefoot's uh, Bag of Holding. These are just some really good cards that work well with Slimefoot. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, we have Keen Sense. Uh, whenever Slimefoot's going to be able to deal damage. Uh, so whenever you deal damage to an opponent, you're going to draw a card. If you're playing in a multiplayer setting, if you saw the EDH Lounge, you can see how good Keen Sense can be simply sacrificing a sapling token and then drawing three cards. Um, Illusioner's Bracers is going to allow us to get some extra saplings on the battlefield. And then like I mentioned earlier, Tainted Strike is another way for us to close the game out once we go to sacrifice those creatures using Slimefoot as some commander damage. Now, this is definitely one of those two protection decks. You want to get down Swiftfoot Boots and Lightning Greaves because you just want Slimefoot on the battlefield and then make sure it's protected and then go from there. Now, one of the ways that we can really amplify a Slimefoot deck is by running an Aristocrats package. Uh, we've got Blood Artists in here. We have Zulaport, Cutthroat, Falcon, Wrath, Noble. Uh, these all care about creatures dying, and we also care about creatures dying because Slimefoot is going to deal that damage to our opponent. Um, throw in a good Sack Outlet and Sanguine Bond to kind of a little bit of redundancy, and you are good to go. Uh, fun fact, Bloodthumb Vampire. It actually works really well in this deck. You get a lot of those saplings down. Let's say you go to swing in with the 1-1. One, one. Um, your opponent offers no blocks. You can start sacrificing those saplings give that plus two plus two and then start swinging it from there so it is entirely possible to get a uh, get into some pretty good damage with bloodthone vampire so if you're not sure what sort of sack outlets to run in your deck uh, definitely throw bloodthone in there and the carrion feeder works really well because you're going to be able to get that plus one counter on your creatures now let's move on to some of the ways that we can generate saplings onto the battlefield we've got scatter the seeds which actually works really well we have convoke uh, put three saplings onto the battlefield uh, fungal sprouting it's a little clunky in this deck we don't really have a lot of creatures that have high power and toughness but you just want to uh, keep that redundancy going as far as being able to have those saplings on the battlefield and then also spore swarm instant speed three mana um, sampling tokens. Uh, Sprout Swarm works absolutely wonderful in this deck. You can really convoke, tap down a lot of creatures and kind of keep chaining those uh, saplings on the battlefield. And then once again with Sapling Migration uh, with the kicker option for the late game. Um, outside of the spells that we have to create some of these sapling tokens, we've got some other ways. We have Jade Mage, Sapling Burst, Necrogenesis. Uh, we're going to be able to keep our opponent's graveyard in check with Genesis and get the saplings going too. Um, sapling Burst is actually really interesting. We can remove a Fade Counter from it, put a green sapling token on the battlefield. Um, it's power toughness equal to the number of Fade Counters on this particular card. Uh, so really you can just remove all the fade counters, get it down there and get some really good um, slime foot triggers. So that, that's definitely a, uh, 
I didn't get a chance to get out one of my videos, but it's definitely an interesting card to throw into your uh, slime foot deck. Now, now that we care about getting saplings onto the battlefield, something that we want to do is make sure that we can really amplify some of those tokens. So we've got Parallel Lives, Sapling Symbosis, and then Second Harvest. Um, all of these are going to allow us to double the number of counters or tokens onto the battlefield, which is going to kind of put us in a spot to where, let's say we only cast one or two Sapling spells, we can use Second Harvest. Let's say that we're going for a Tainted Strike win, we can use Second Harvest to help us kind of get that win. Uh, we're also running doubling season in here and I wanted to highlight this on its own slide because with doubling season uh, we're going to get twice as many tokens but at the same time uh, you definitely want to run some sort of planeswalker package with doubling season um, once you get a planeswalker down with doubling season it's going to enter the battlefield with twice the amount of starting loyalty counters so once we get let's say that we have doubling season down uh, we go for Vraska it's going to enter the battlefield with 10 loyalty and then you go for that minus seven ability once again, with doubling season, end up with six black assassin tokens on the battlefield that says uh, whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, that player loses the game, which is always a lot of fun. And we're also running Omnixilis in here. Good utility planeswalker, easily becoming uh, one of my favorite planeswalkers in Commander. Uh, we have that card draw, and then once it enters the battlefield with that minus eight, uh, whenever they draw a card, they're going to lose two life, which kind of kind of keeps on theme with our Aristocrats package. Now, outside of these ways, we also have running a few extra kind of fungus-style creatures in here that support the saplings themselves. Uh, we have Spore Mound, which we're going to be able to get some saplings off of our land drop. Um, this is the only fungus creature that we're running that has those spore counters, and mainly main reason for that is because sacrifice the sapling, uh, target creature gets minus one, minus one until end of turn. And then Tender Shoot Dryad, my goodness, this, you definitely, no matter what sort of build you end up with Slime Foot, you definitely want to run Tender Shoot Dryad in here. Um, simply getting it down, getting those tokens at the beginning of each upkeep, and then each sapling you get plus two, plus two. Um, Tender Shoot Dryad really kind of pushes the game into, you don't have to worry about a risk that you can almost just start swinging in with your sapling tokens when they're sitting at a 3-3. Now, as far as some of the good utility stuff, once we get onto the battlefield, we're running Ashnod's Altar, Skull Clamp, and Heartstone. Um, Heartstone's going to give us a reduced cost off Slimefoot's activated ability. Um, Skull Clamp is Skull Clamp. Get it on there. In any sort of 1-1 token deck, it is king. Uh, equip it onto your creature and just start drawing into a bunch of cards. And it works really well with Slimefoot's triggered ability. And then Ashnod's Altar is another way for you to at least have a sack outlet or start sacrificing some of your creatures. Now, I didn't run any sort of infinite combo in uh, slime foot i tend to not run that in my commander decks but with ashnod's altar and a few other cards i'm sure there's some combos out there that you can definitely go for now as far as some of the good utility cards in the deck since we are caring about the amount of creatures on the battlefield uh, running stuff like costly plunder we can sacrifice one of our sapling tokens to draw two cards uh, essence warden is going to allow us to make sure our life totals we are playing a black style deck or base black so we're going to have a lot of life loss you know stuff like dark tutelage uh, dark confidant so having essence warden down is going to allow us to get a little bit of uh, life gain off of that and then Diabolic Intent, sack a creature, search your library for a card, put it in your hand. Uh, we're also running Smuggler's Copter. Worked really well with the Crew 1 on those tokens, and you know, it's always good to be able to filter. And then Morbid Bloom. I didn't get a chance to go for this, but we're playing Commander. It is a little expensive at 6 mana, but if you can catch something really big out of the graveyard, you can end up with a lot of uh, saplings on the battlefield, so I felt it was pretty good to run it in here. Uh, that's going to be it for the deck tech. I do have three gameplay videos up for you right now. Be sure to check them out, and if you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe. Thanks. Bye.